The Bible is a book when it comes down to the end of things. And yes, I'm sure at one point it was pure and it came from God. But what happens after? Unfortunately, men get a hold of things, don't they? We have a, we have a bike ride with the church. I can get you Give me just so one, two minutes. Okay. okay. All right. I really got to go. Gospel rhythm, just give me two minutes, please. These kids are, dry, are, are going away, so. Uh, hey, real, real quick. Sure. Angel, um, if you die in your sins. What's the most important thing to you in life? Is it your own personal happiness? I mean, is, is, that, is that what you strive for above everything else? I strive to live a good life and try, try to lead it uh, by example. Do you believe the Bible when it says that our hearts are desperately wicked? Or do you think man is basically good? I, I honestly don't even need the Bible to see that, right? I, I, think, I think men in general, meaning men and women, Inherently, we're, we're bred with evil, right? We see it all the time growing up. Um, young kids that can be best friends growing up could be teenagers and drift apart and then start to hate each other for things that they never would have thought of as youngsters, right? So are you good or evil? <sighs> I'm human, right? So, so I battle with, with trying not to be evil all the time. Um, I try to do the right things. You yell at your kids, you have a bad day when you cuss at people while you're driving. You're being evil, aren't you? But you're inherently fighting it all the time. So what's your standard? So what you try to do is you be conscious of it. Be conscious of what you're doing. Well, what's your standard? What do you mean by standard? Well, how do you gauge good and evil? <sighs> See, Hitler's evil to your evil will be different. True, I, I get you. I, I think personally, I think what it is is uh, people that strive, right, and consciously try to be good are not evil. People that thrive prosper by being wicked and doing things that hurt other people or the world in general, that's evil to me. Do you think God is happy with you or angry at you? I think God is, uh, I think for the most part, happy with me. He is? I believe so. So you don't believe what the Bible says? Verbatim, no. Um, and the reason is, I worked in, in printing for a long time, and let's, let's face it, the the Bible is a book when it comes down to the end of things. And yes, I'm sure at one point it was pure and it came from God. But what happens after? Unfortunately, men get a hold of things, don't they? And what do we do to things? We corrupt things constantly, right? So in doing so, I think some of the true meaning gets lost. And I think politically, people in power at the time, thousands of years ago, control what ends up being put in that book that we're all reading. You know, I've been reading the Bible every day without fail for 49 years. Never found a mistake in it. And I can find out by just looking on the internet if it's changed over the years. God's preserved his word. You can trust it. Everything it says is truth. So here's a question for you. Okay. On judgment day, how are you going to do? Are you going to make it to heaven? When the time comes and God makes a decision on whether I go to heaven or hell, I'm going to heaven. No question about it. Because you're a good person, basically. I feel I am. Okay, I'm going to challenge you on that. How many lies have you told in your life? Countless. Ever stolen something? Yes. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Of course. Would you use your mother's name as a cuss word? No. Why not? I just wouldn't. And, and when I've used God's name and said, you know, <laughs> whatever the words are, you, you say that out of anger, right? You're not, you're not consciously thinking about it. Um, you know what is happening is what you're doing is substituting it for the word S, you want to express disgust. Angel, that's called blasphemy, so serious, it's punishable by death in the Old Testament. You'd never use your mother's name like that. We have a, we have a bike ride with the church. I gotta get give, going. Me, give me just one, two minutes. Okay. okay. Please. All right, I really got to go. Gospel with them, just give me two minutes, please. These kids are, dry, are, are going away, so. Uh, hey, real, real quick, sure. Angel, Jesus said if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. So you've told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterer at heart, and you have to face God on Judgment Day. If he judges you by the Ten Commandments... This you is can... during my lifetime that all these things have happened, right? Yes, absolutely. So you ask for forgiveness, and you, you try to better yourself each and every day. No, that won't work. I'll tell you why. If you stand in front of a, a, an earthly court, an earthly judge, and say, Judge, I've violated the law, but I want to tell you, Rob the bank, shot the guard, but I'm, I'm improving my life. I've learned from these experiences. This happened over my life. He's going to say you're going to jail. So there's something else you need to be saved. Do you know what it is? 
You're going to tell me. It's God's mercy. If you're in court and you've got no justification, you throw yourself on the mercy of the judge. And the Bible says God is rich in mercy to all that call upon him. He doesn't want you to end up in hell. He doesn't want to give you justice. And the reason he can show you mercy is that Jesus suffered and died on the cross for the sin of the world. Angel, we broke God's law. Jesus paid the fine. That's what happened on that cross. If you're in court... We could discuss a lot more for a lot longer because I have some questions for you. Unfortunately, i got to get going. I'll, I'll walk with you just for a second. This I, is so I, important. I have to ride, actually. Okay, just let me finish the gospel, if I may, because okay. this is so important. Sure. Then Jesus rose from the dead and defeated death. Angel, if you're in court and someone pays you a fine, a judge can legally let you off. He can say there's a stack of speeding fines here, but someone's paid him. You're free to go. And he can do that which is legal and right and just. Mm -hmm. And God can do that which is legal. He can let you live forever because Jesus paid your fine in full. But what you must do is repent and trust alone in him. Angel, don't trust your goodness because it's not going to save you on judgment day. Trust in Jesus alone. You're like a man on the edge of a plane. He's going to jump 10,000 feet. This is his plan. Doesn't have a parachute, but he's going to flap his arms. He's going to try and save himself. I say to that man, don't do that. Trust the parachute. So transfer your trust from yourself to the Savior. And the second you do that, you've got God's promise. He'll grant you forgiveness of sins and the gift of everlasting life. Is this making sense? It does. Thank you for staying. Everyone was saying leave, leave. <laughs> yeah. And I just don't want you to leave. I'll, I'll be able to catch them. When you think about what we talked about? I sure will. you have a Bible at home? Uh, I do. I noticed the group you're with actually prayed just before. Correct. And I prayed for you. I prayed for you before I met you. So please think about what we talked about and have a sense of urgency. People get killed on riding bikes. So you could be snatched into eternity in a second. Can I just give you something? What's that? In the past, when I shared the gospel with someone and they didn't have a Bible, I'd encourage them to download the scriptures from the internet. But now I have something substantial to give them. This is the Bible's four Gospels. It's the entire books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, a huge 380 pages, and yet it's lightweight and pocket-sized for you to carry to give to the unsaved. The introduction, of course, contains a clear Gospel presentation and an encouragement to read the whole Bible. But it also contains our wildly popular Why Christianity, plus commonly asked questions about the Christian faith, principles of Christian growth, and teaching about the presentation of the Biblical Gospel. And by the way, we have great bulk prices for this book. You can get the Bible's four Gospels at livingwaters.com. Just click on Store, Books, and Outreach.